Now, we've already seen how simple it is to calculate a future value or a past value. We simply use these two very easy formulas, easy to remember, easy to calculate. If I'm working with a compound growth, that would be my way of finding the future value. And if I wanted the past value or the principal value, I would simply have my future value the same double end expression just with a negative exponent and it, in a sense it, it is kind of intuitive as we see that to get from p to a my time period or uh, the number of times i get interest is a positive times i must add interest and to get from A back to P, in other words, if I have a future value and I want to see what happened in the past, I must subtract my um, interest a number of times. So I had, or I'm going in the negative direction on a timeline. Now, why is this called, this topic called timelines? Well, let me explain. It is not always a simple thing to invest money and in a few years you just get to your amount and it's grown to certain to a certain value. Often, most of, most of the times, things happen in between. Okay, maybe along the way, you had to, you needed some of the money, so you withdrew some money, or maybe you were lucky enough to have have had some extra money, so you could have added some money to your savings at some point. And even further down the line, maybe even something happened like your interest rate change so you used to get a certain interest rate over the first time period and then for the last time period you got a different interest rate over that period things change roll with the punches how are we going to do it well it depends on whether i'm going forward or backwards if i'm going forward in time i want to know what is the future value going to be then i am going to break it up I'm going to say, okay, something happened here, so let's first see what happened here, and we decide, okay, then this would be my new principle, let's call it principle, this one will call the principle at time zero, this will call principle after the first change, so P1. Now we have a new investment, we forget about what happened in the past, we have a new investment and we'll start over trying to get from this P to that A but again something else happened in between so we'll go again to the new P whatever happened okay something changed now we'll have a new P P2 and we forget about all of what happened in the past and try and get from this P to that A with the new information given and I think the best way of explaining all of this so that you're not as confused as you might be now is with an example. Always, 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 always draw a timeline. 6,000 Rand is deposited into a savings account. Four years later, 7,000 Rand is added to the savings. Something changed. The interest rate for the first three years is 18% per annum compounded quarterly. Thereafter, the interest rate is 19% per annum compounded semi-annually. Not just that the rate changed, the compound period changed. Calculate the value of the savings at the end of the seventh year. This is a mouthful. Let's go put all of it on a timeline for ourselves. So we'll make a nice big one. And then we're going to put in all of the information. So we have time zero and time after seven years times zero and time after seven years. Now let's see the first four years something happens after four years seven thousand grand was added. So let's say initially we had six thousand. Now that six thousand grew to a certain amount and at this point we added another seven thousand. Okay, plus seven thousand. The interest rate for the first three years. Okay, so not just did the I think actually I should just move up, that's not three years really, that's four years more or less thing. 
So that's plus 7,000, plus 6,000, and then after three years, interest rate change. So in other words, for the first part, I got 18% per annum compounded quarterly. And then for the latter part, I got 19% per annum compounded semi-annually. Now you can see that two things change. And they ask us, what did calculate the value at the end of the seventh year? So we want a future value. We are given an initial principal value. And we see that this principal changes two times because of the changes that happen. So we're going to have a principal at the first change, a new principal. Then we're going to use that principal to get the principal at the second change. And finally, that second principal is going to be. So we're going to add the 7,000 to get P2. And then finally, use that amount, that new investment, to get to A. So let's see. What is P1? Well, First look at it, that P1 is still a future value compared to P0. So the future value is equal to P0, 1 plus I to the power of N. My interest, my future value, I've got 6,000, is my present value, or my principal value, invested at 18%. Compounded quarterly means I get it four times in the year, so I must divide by four, and not just by four. I mean, this is after three years. Let's just put that in. Three years, that's after four years. Not just do I have to divide by four, I have to divide by 400 because I'm working with percentages. And how many years? Three years. No! It's not three years. I'm not working in years. I'm working with the number of times I'm getting interest. How many times am I getting interest? Well, four times a year for three years means I get it three times four, or 12 times. And then at P1, what will my new value be? Use our calculator. We get 6,000 times, and in brackets, 1 plus 18 divided by 400 close the brackets to the power of 12 gives me 10,175 228 I'm just going to store this in memory I'm going to say uh, memory store because I'm going to use that later but 10175,29 this is now the new value of P1 and I'm going to use this value of P1 to get to P2 because then another change takes place. At P2, 7,000 grand is added. But what would be this value in that time period? Now look, just remember my interest rate changed. I'm working with a new interest rate now. Okay, so this time P2 is still a future value of even P1. So P1 is going forward in time so we use the formula 1 plus i to the power positive n where i got 10175 1 plus my new interest rate is now 19 percent that i get semi annually semi and semi annually means twice a year so i divide with two because i get it twice in a year you must divide it with two to work out how much I get each time. And not just with 2, but with 200, because I must divide with 100 also. And this is for how long? What period elapsed between year 3 and year 4? One year. How many times will I get interest in that one year? Twice, because I get it semi-annually. And what will be my new answer? So I already have P there. That's going to be multiplied with my bracket. 1 plus... 19 over 200, close my bracket to the power of 2, and I get 12,243. 
12,243 cents. And again, I'm going to store this in memory because I have to use it again. Okay. Because, oh, not just store it in memory, I must also add another 7,000 Rand. That is what P2 is. Okay, so P2, right, this is actually wrong. Well, let's say, so P2 plus 7,000 would then give me 19,200. And 43 cents. That is now the amount that I have in my bank account at year four. And that amount is going to grow for another three years after getting from four to seven. So finally, I've got my future value A is equal to P2. Mm. Maybe not P2, let's say P2 plus 7,000. Okay, I already calculated it. Um, 1 plus I to the power of N is equal, I work this out, that's 19,200,43 that is invested at 19% compounded semi annually. For how many years? Three years, but N does not represent years. N represents the number of times I get interest. I get interest twice a year, which means in three years, I'll get it six times. And then I get the answer of, there's my calculator, okay, there we go. That is multiplied with the bracket, one plus 19 over 200, close the bracket, to the power of six, giving me an answer of 21,030 rand and 99 cents. 21,030 rand and 99 cents. Now you might say, oh, that's not so bad. I can do it. Well, you go and try. As for me, I'll show you another example.